Hello and welcome to Rotted Reviews, and today we continue on with the advent calendar of Christmas horror movies. And today, I'm giddy. I really, really am very giddy today, and there's a few reasons for that. First of which is just a few hours ago, my channel hit 3,000 subs. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for all your support. If you've been watching my stuff, you enjoy my channel, and you've subscribed, thank you, thank you, thank you. The second reason I'm giddy is because I just got done watching a hell of a Christmas horror movie. And it seems to be one that a lot of people have been sleeping on, including, well, up until just recently, myself. And the movie I'm referring to is the 2005 film from Spain, A Christmas Tale. Written by Luis Oberdejo and directed by Paco Plaza, the writer-director team behind the Rec movies. That's right, two years prior to making what a lot of people call the king of the found footage format movies, they made A Christmas Tale. And in this movie, which is set in 1985, we get introduced to five childhood friends. And in typical throwback to 80s movies, these friends are riding around on their bikes, getting into all sorts of mischief and mayhem and generally having fun together. That is, up until they're wandering through the woods and they come across a hole. And in this hole is a woman dressed in a Santa costume. In short order, and thanks to some news reports, they find that this woman performed a robbery and in her getaway attempt landed in this hole where she is now suffering from some minor injuries. But regardless, still just can't get out. And then the internal discussion among the friends gets centered around what they should do. Should they help her? Should they feed her? Should they let her out? Should they extort her for the missing money? Or should they just wait for her to die? Now, there was a whole lot for me to like about this movie, but I think the chief element among them was the conflicted tonal duality. It was almost like watching two movies in one. We had the situation with the friends interacting with one another in a very kind of Goonies or E.T.-esque fashion, which was very 80s throwback and, you know, find Stranger Things, something along those lines. So there is a little bit of a jovial atmosphere, especially in the beginning, as they're interacting with one another, riding around on their bikes. And then there's also the situation of what's happening with the woman in the hole, which doesn't pull any punches. It is harsh. It is difficult. She starts to get gravely injured, and things really start to take a nasty turn. Dos millones. Han dicho que te llevaste dos millones. Eso es mentira. Yo no he robado nada. Si nos dices dónde está el dinero, te tiramos una cuerda para que salgas. No decimos nada a la policía. Palabra del equipo. And those two tones working side by side simultaneously added both a level of richness and depth to both of them, as well as kind of fracturing the former one just a little bit. We started to see the fracturing of the friendship and the more serious tones start to kind of invade in there, making it a really interesting coming of age story. By having those conflicting tones work in opposition with one another, it brought both of them to a level that was just delightful. It was almost like salted caramel or bacon in your chocolate chip cookies. It was just two opposite flavors that enhanced the whole. And it made it so that when things really did start to collide and the two paralleling, untouching segments started really bashing heads with one another, finally intersecting, it made it that much more powerful and that much more enjoyable. This movie was not without its faults and it wasn't without its flaws, but I loved it nonetheless. Throughout this advent calendar, I've been watching some good movies, some not so good, and some absolutely god-awful terrible ones. But 19 days in, I finally got to one that brought that Christmas spirit out in me, that brought that sense of fun and revelry and excitement and joy. It wasn't full-on imbued with the holiday spirit of choking people with Christmas lights and hanging them with garland, but never Nevertheless, it did have that Christmas tone to it, especially with the woman in the Santa Claus outfit. And the sheer delight in the storyline and in the characters and seeing how complex and how flawed they became was just phenomenal. It was what I've been waiting for. This was the energetic shot in the arm that I've been needing. And the thing of it is, it's available for free, at least in the United States. I'm not sure about other countries, but you can actually look this up and watch it on YouTube with ads. It's also available on other services like Plex.tv with their non-local media streaming library. You can also purchase or rent it on Amazon if you so choose to do that. But either way you slice it, either way you watch it, I do think, like I said, this is one that a lot of people have been sleeping on, and it's time to open that 
them peepers. Because I do think it's kind of difficult to find a good, like, nostalgic horror movie. And it's also difficult to find a good Christmas horror movie. And when we can actually find a movie that combines all those elements all into one and still manages to make it work, I'm advocating for it. Like I said, it does have flaws, and I'm not going to deny that. But the magic of the film far superseded those. The only thing I'll really comment on is I do kind of wish that it ended about five minutes earlier than it did. But nevertheless, it was certainly something that didn't ruin the movie for me. So that should do it for this review. I wholeheartedly give a blanket recommendation for the 2005 movie, A Christmas Tale. Thank you so much for joining me here today. And thank you again for 3,000 subs. That's fantastic. I'm so jazzed. Remember, next time you want to watch a horror movie, first make sure that it's good and rotted.